Today's Mass is taken from the, the proper of the dedication of a church. It is the dedication of the Basilica of Saints Peter and Paul. And the commemoration is of the Sunday, the sixth Sunday after Epiphany. The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Our Lord, in His public ministry, often spoke to His disciples by means of a parable. Now, a parable is a story in which we use natural means in order to draw our minds to the understanding of the supernatural. And in today's Gospel, the Gospel of the Sunday, our Lord compares, or rather uses the parable of the mustard seed. And He did this in order to explain better the supernatural mystery which He was about to teach. Just as all good teachers, we must all find a way of getting the point across to our students. We must experiment. If one way does not work, then we must find another method. So our Lord, the divine teacher, and the most perfect of all teachers, used the parable to teach the following mystery. He says that the kingdom of heaven, and by the kingdom of heaven, we are to understand His church on earth. He says that the kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed. And the mustard seed, as perhaps many of you know, especially if you, have, uh, if you use a lot of spices when you cook, you know that the mustard seed is one of the smallest seeds. Next to the poppy seed, it is the tiniest of all seeds. And yet when this small, this tiny seed sprouts, it grows into a great tree. If you were to plant it, it would become a great tree. And so he compares it, this mustard seed, to the Catholic Church. And the history of the church shows just how appropriate this comparison really is. And I will not go into detail. I gave a sermon on this just a few weeks ago. But when the church began, we know that there were only about 120 souls. That was on the first Pentecost Sunday. Only 120 souls. That is how small it was. But when the Holy Ghost descended upon the apostles and gave unction to their words, St. Peter went out and preached and converted 3,000. And after that, we know the story of the martyrs and how they converted so many thousands of souls to Catholicism. And then for 1900 years, the church continues to grow. And in the 1950s, uh, it was said that there were about 400 million Catholics in the world. 400 million Catholics. And so you see how the church started out very tiny. And then, when it was planted, it grew into this great institution. Just like the mustard seed grows into a great tree. And so, we should, as Catholics, we should rejoice. We should rejoice that our Lord's Church has grown so much, has been spread throughout the whole world. But, to be a good Catholic, we must do more than just rejoice. We should do more than just be happy. We should be good Catholics. And now the church obviously has dropped significantly in numbers. Our church, we should be, we should have the Basilica of St. Josephat. We should have all of those people that go there. The hundreds of people that go there. They should belong to our faith. And their church belongs to us. It is merely stolen from us. And we might ask, how could such a thing happen in the church? And the answer is quite simple. It is because God permits it. 
and God permits it for whatever reason, we cannot be certain, but we can surmise that it is perhaps to uproot all of the lukewarm Catholics. Perhaps it is to make those of us who have remained faithful to tra the traditional Catholicism, perhaps it is to make us to become greater saints, for we have persecution from our family and from our friends. And what greater sacrifice to make than that, to be rejected by our own family and friends for the faith. And rather than becoming discouraged or to begin to doubt the indefectibility of the Catholic faith, we should remember this saying, and it is quite simple, that God is more interested in quality than He is in quantity. Just as our Lord does not care so much about how many prayers we say each day, as He does about the fervor with which they are said, so God does not care how many Catholics there are, but He cares more about how fervent they are, how great their love of God and the love of church, how great that love is in each soul. That is what He looks at. Not the number of people who serve Him, but how He is served. And it is for us a, more, a greater duty to live up to the Catholic standards in these days. It is, great, it is a greater responsibility for us, traditional Catholics, than it was perhaps before Vatican II. It is a greater responsibility. And what should we do to live up to Catholic standards? We should, obviously, receive the sacraments. Receive them as much as possible. Confession, even if you have not committed a mortal sin. Even if you cannot think of a single venial sin since your last confession. You can always confess a past sin, whether it has been confessed or not. And you can be absolved and receive greater graces against temptation. Come to confession at least once a month. Receive the sacrament of Holy Eucharist as often as possible. Come to Mass whenever you have the opportunity. It is a shame that the past few Saturdays, uh, there have been very few people coming. In fact, last night there was one soul who came to Mass. There was no server. There was no one else. One soul. And to think how valuable the Mass is. Were it not for the Mass... The, the world would have been destroyed long ago. God would not have put up with our sins. The world would have been destroyed. Come to Mass and ask for the graces which you need and which your families need and which the world needs in this time of apostasy. Come to Mass. And the next thing that we must do, and this is a great responsibility in these days, more so than at any other time. We are living in the time of the great apostasy which St. Paul taught about. We are living in the time, this is one of the preparations for the coming of the Antichrist. This is one of the last preparations. And we are living through it. And so we should be faithful to the traditional teachings of the Catholic Church, we should be faithful to His commandments and to the commandments of the church. And we should also be apostles. The church in the beginning grew because of the fervor of the apostles and the zeal with which they preached. The church, is, once again, is very tiny and we need apostles. We need zealous preachers of the faith. So we should tell our friends and our families when it is prudent and when it is possible that the Vatican II religion is not the Catholic faith. There is contradiction between the church before Vatican II and the church after Vatican II. For instance, the teaching of religious liberty, Pius IX, made it a dogma of the faith that outside the Catholic Church there is no salvation. And yet, John Paul II, 
What did he say? He said, the Holy Ghost uses non-Catholic religions as means of salvation. That is a heresy. That is a heresy which, in practice at least, has been held by all of the Vatican II so-called popes. Explain that to them. How can there be contradiction between the church before Vatican II and after, and yet it remained the same church? That is not possible. And again, we must all believe this, that we must judge whether or not Ratzinger, Benedict XVI, is true Pope or not. We cannot just merely say, I leave it up to God. We cannot merely say, I can't judge the Pope, that's not my job. No. If we reject a Pope who is the true Pope, then we are schismatics. If we accept a Pope who is a false one, then we are schismatics. Our Catholicity rests on this papal authority, this issue of papal authority. Is he the Pope or not? If he is, then you follow him. If he is not, then you reject him. And we must explain that to others, and we must be firmly convinced of it. That is our greatest responsibility as Catholics these days during Vatican II, is to reject Vatican II and its heresy, and to, to spread the traditional Catholic faith. That is what we must do to become good Catholics. For our Lord does not look at quantity, but at quality. So ask yourselves today, how have I done in this regard? How, what kind of Catholic am I? Do I come to the sacraments? Do I hear Mass regularly? Do I stand up for the traditional faith? Or do I merely let everybody say whatever they want against it? Never speak to my family about it for fear of, of losing their friendship? Ask yourselves that. And pray for the grace of the Holy Ghost to come down upon you that you might be able to become a better Catholic and to be a good apostle. And that once again our churches, we may return to our churches, our basilicas, and that all of those fallen away Catholics might again return to the true faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen.